Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their world and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. The following interview is designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. Your host, Derek Champagne, is the founder and CEO of The Artist Evolution, a full-service agency building successful brands, marketing tools, and campaigns, and also the author of the best-selling book, Don't Buy a Duck. And now, let's begin today's Leadership Series interview. Welcome to the Business Leadership Series, where our goal is to inspire you to become the best leader that you can be. Today, that's the best leader and the healthiest leader that you can be, because that's important. We have an awesome guest today. We've got Sapiwe Baleka, and he is the founder of Fitness Trucking, Driver Health Editor, Road King Magazine, and then also fitness guru to the trucking industry. And the author of his newest book, his his first book, I believe, Four Minute Fit. Welcome to the program today. Hey, thank you, Derek. Glad to be here. Man, I've got this book in front of me. Thank you so much for sending it. I've been enjoying it. I can relate. The the, the uh, subtitle here is The Metabolism Accelerator for the Time Crunched, Yes, Desk Bound, and Stressed Out. So awesome book and very timely. Tell me a little bit, give me a little bit about your background because this has really, really impressed me. You've got an interesting background that we want to talk about uh, so our listeners can get to know you better. But how do you go from graduating from Yale University and you're the first African American ever named to the first team all Ivy League swim team, just barely missed the 92 Olympic <laughs> swimming trials? How do you go from that and then, and then go into the trucking industry? You, you've, you've got a story to tell. Well, yeah. Um, it's not the average story, certainly. <laughs> um, when I, When I didn't qualify for the U.S. Olympic swimming trials in 1992. I mean, that had been my goal since I was eight or 10 years old. Um, hmm. It was the reason why I went to uh, college in the first place was to, yeah, I wanted to swim and I wanted to make the U.S. Olympic swimming team. Wow. Um, so I missed qualifying for Olympic trials by eight tenths of a second. And that was that was it. That was the end of a 10, 12 year pursuit and uh, was kind of lost at that point. Didn't Never thought about what I'd do after swimming um, and actually just didn't have the heart to keep training, didn't want to be at school anymore. So I left hmm. and I spent the next 15 years sort of wandering around the world and um, doing all kinds of projects and missionary type work and meeting great people and learning things. And um, But ultimately, you know, after a certain point, I kind of got burnt out, Derek, and, and I'd done a lot of things, a lot of amazing things, but I hadn't earned any money, mm. didn't really have a traditional work history or, or, or a real job, um, and I needed, to, I needed to do that. I needed a career change. I needed to make some money. They don't call it the nonprofit world for no reason, <laughs> okay? Right. Um, didn't know what to do, didn't really see any opportunity to go into corporate America or anything like that. But I had a friend that was a truck driver and he's like, hey, you should drive a truck. It really kind of suits your nomadic lifestyle. You got plenty of time to think about what you want to do. You can um, um, save money. You know, you're still single. You don't have a family to take care of yet. Uh, so I kind of got into truck driving by default and um, I was 140 pounds the day I started. And two months into my truck driving career, I came to, to Prime Inc., which is a trucking company based in Springfield, Missouri, and they have a student driver program that I went through to get my CDL. Uh, two months into my truck driving career, I gained 10.7% of my body weight. Yeah, I was uh, now 155 pounds. Uh, I gained 15 pounds in two months. Might not seem like a lot to some people, but Anytime you gain 10% of your body weight in such a short amount of time, that's extreme. And that's when I realized I had to take responsibility for my health, for my weight while I was out on the road. Uh, and I kind of had a freak out moment. I mean, I got scared. I was like, wow, if I don't do anything, I'm going to I'm going to end up obese, like 69% right. of America's truck drivers. Right. So I started testing everything, you know, every kind of fitness product, every kind of fitness, you know, piece of equipment or, you know, fitness program or nutrition program to find out what, what, what works and what doesn't work in the unique environment of long haul truck driving, which was a real challenge, Derek, wow. at, because truck drivers, they're living in a box. Right. Okay. We don't have access to uh, a kitchen. We have food storage issues. You know, we're not carrying normal 
size refrigerators and freezers where we can store a week or a month's worth of food on the truck. Right. Um, plus, we have all these challenges. We're driving a tractor and a trailer. It's 53 foot long. We don't like to leave the main interstates and highways. So getting to the gym is not practical. Uh, and those gyms aren't set up for truck parking anyway. Right. So there are all these challenges, um, all these restrictions, really, that made it incredibly difficult. And at one point, Derek, I realized there's a nutrition and fitness program for for everybody in America. Hmm. And except for long haul truck drivers in their unique environment. So I saw there was a real a real need, a real business opportunity. Um, and I decided I was going to design such a system. And I spent the next three years while I was out on the road doing that and answering the question, what's the least, least time, the most effective, least time consuming way to get results. And when I figured that out and used the system on myself, then used it on other drivers and then set up this program at prime and used it on other drivers at prime. And it kept, we kept getting great results and eventually became the number one weight loss program in the country. Um, then we decided to take all the lessons, all the steps, everything that we had learned from this and put it in the book, four minute fit so that the rest of America could see how to do it. Wow. That's awesome. And I mean, this, this story has been featured. I mean, you've been featured in men's health sports illustrated the Huffington post and too many to even name, but even I think Fox sports has a segment changing lanes about your story as well. Right? Yeah. That came, um, uh, right after the sports illustrated article. And I mean, it's just been such a great blessing to get all of this attention for helping the most unhealthy occupation in America get healthy. Um, and yeah, that, you know, that, that Fox sports video actually won a sports Emmy, yeah. um, which was really, you know, amazing because there were so many other, uh, short documentary films in that category of great people doing amazing things. Uh, so it was an honor just to be included in that. That's awesome. Um, I love your story. I, I, a couple things strike me. I, I, I had a background in the music industry where I really thought that that was the only thing I was going to do was, was, and, and, and was in LA for years and chase it as hard as you could. And, and I had that defining moment myself where I realized, Oh, I've got to go a different direction. And, and I felt lost a little bit as well. I, I can relate to that on a different level of, man, you planned your whole life. There was no doubt in your mind. Swimming is what you were going to do. And then you just, you were just kind of forced one day to find another direction. And that's, I can relate to that on a personal level, how tough that can be to rewire your whole mind of something that you've had, uh, as a mindset to do your whole life and on a high level. T tell me about tell me about what that was like. I mean, what, what, I mean, we won't stay on the valleys, but tell me about that disappointment of of saying, "Man, I've got to go a different direction." And then, you know, then I want to focus on how how great it is that you took an industry that it's easy to give up in, and, and found a way to succeed in it. So take me though back to that that moment for a minute of of realizing that you needed to go a different direction with with what your dreams and your vision was. I remember very vividly. Um, when I, when I was 10, I was already a state champion swimmer, but I was playing a lot of other sports at this, at the time. Okay. But I remember very vividly, my father took me to see my uncle through marriage, um, Hayes Jones, who had won a gold medal in the 110 meter high hurdles at the Tokyo Olympics. Wow. We went to his house, um, and he put the medal in my hand and it was like heavy, you know, <laughs> it was a big, heavy medal. And he said, if you want one of these, you've got to make a commitment. You've, you've got to pick a sport and then you've got to commit to it. And at the time, I liked playing football more than anything. But, you know, I was small as a kid. I knew I was never going to be big enough and strong enough to play college football, um, let alone professional football. And I was already a state champion and swimmer. So, uh, so I picked swimming by default. Hmm. Um, and at that point, you know, there were not a lot of African-American swimmers at the time. Uh, let alone ones that were winning at the state level and then at the national level by the time I'm in junior high school and high school. Right. Um, so I remember doing interviews when I was like 12 years old and they were saying, hey, you could be the first black swimmer on the U.S. Olympic swim team. Wow. Um, but the thing about that, Derek, was my father was like, hey, if you want to be a champion, then you put yourself around other champions and you do what they do. So he went out of his way to get me on the best swimming teams. And every single day I trained with, 
Um, I lived with, um, I spent most of my days with people who are already national champions and collegiate champions and members of the U.S. Olympic swim team and number one in the world. And I was doing what they were doing. And so I kind of took it for granted that I just keep doing it. Then one day I'm going to succeed as much as as they have. So when that moment came and I didn't do it, it wasn't that. I was trying to make the U.S. Olympic swimming team, uh, uh, and I didn't make it. It was also, I'm not as good as I think I am. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that was um, probably the toughest part of it. Uh, you know, so I, I cried. It was, it, was, mm. it was devastating because for every day when I woke up, I knew exactly what I was going to do the hour I woke up, the entire day, how that fit into my weekly you know, schedule and training plan, how that fit into the month, the season of training, how that fit into a four year quadrennial cycle and how that was all leading to the 92 Olympics. I mean, there wasn't a moment I woke up. I didn't know what I needed to do that day. So now all of a sudden here I am waking up and I have a blank canvas. There's nothing I have to, to, to do. I mean, this is at once I left school, that is, I, um, I didn't want to swim anymore. I didn't want to be at school. And, and actually, I just, right after I helped Yale win the, the Ivy League swimming title for the first time in 15 years, yeah. three days later, I left. I, I literally, two months before graduation, I'm like, I don't even want to be here. I just left, huh? showed up on my father's doorstep. and was like, Dad, thanks. Love you. I want to go see the world. I'm tired of reading about Jesus and the Buddha. I want to live like them. And <laughs> I don't know when I'm coming back, if ever. Thanks. Love you. And I'm out of here. Wow. Wow. <laughs> But at that point, I realized, and this was, the, this was the key for me, I realized that I had this opportunity for the first time, I could do anything I wanted to do. There was nothing I had to do. I didn't have to get up and go to class. I didn't have to get up and go to practice. I didn't have to structure my day to reach some future goal. I could just wake up and live I guess is a good way to put it and just be. And that provided some, some well-needed balance in my life. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. That's that's really powerful. You know, what strikes me too is, is, you know, you spent this time surrounding yourself with champions who were driven and had a vision and, and yes, maybe there was a career change for you, but you still have, you never lost that mindset. I mean, what you're doing now is, is, is what champions do. So you know, that wasn't time lost. You, I think you really learned a lot during that time, didn't you? Well, yeah, I became a champion drifter. So to speak. <laughs> well, for a while, right? <laughs> and then, and then when I sort of reemerged into this new phase of my life, I mean, yeah, the the work ethic is there. Right. The the goal setting skills, um, the the inner drive to figure out a plan and execute it and perform. Yeah. That's all all hardwired into me. Um, but I think it was critical that I spent all this equal amount of time, um, in this other alternative way of which, you know, an alternative for me, another way of living that helped me to be more down to earth, helped me to learn how to, kind of flow with what's what's going on around me and connect to what's going on around me Mm. and not be so myopic and then of course yeah i got to see the world i got to meet with all kinds of people and had had my viewpoints and my horizons and you know just learned a lot about this planet Mm. that's awesome man thanks for sharing i appreciate you sharing your story uh very personal, very interesting. And uh, let's talk about the book for a minute. I mean, I love when people take something in industry and change it and turn it upside down. And, and uh, again, I can relate to this one as someone that travels some and, and I have the, the luxuries of, of a kitchen in my hotel and those other things, but I still even have to try to intentionally uh, bring my, bring my cooler box and put my healthy food in there and all those things. And I, I, I can't imagine how tough it must be when you've got that giant trailer behind and you can't just pull over to Whole Foods and, and, and stock up your refrigerator and and so tell me i mean what 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 made you what made you decide that you were going to take it to the level that you are this book is awesome and it's and congratulations that you're about to have a that that you got the simon schuster deal and that this will soon be a bestseller for you too so that's a big deal 
Yeah, thanks. It um, The book kind of came organically. It kind of came to me after I started getting attention. And I mean, the reason why I started getting attention was first and foremost, I was a truck driver. I'm driving this truck. Um, I'm gaining weight. I have to take responsibility for my health. So I start studying metabolic endocrinology, which is how your hormones regulate metabolism. Um, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's the most effective, least time consuming way to get results? Because as a truck driver, you make money with the truck rolling. Your schedule is always changing. That's disrupting your circadian rhythms, um, which is disrupting your hormone production and, and specifically the hormones that regulate metabolism. There were all these things that I was never told was going to happen to me physiologically when I entered this industry. Um, we weren't given any training, any um, warning, any tools. We weren't given any protection. So imagine, Derek, you were an astronaut and they spent, sent you into outer space without a spacesuit. <laughs> So, you know, it'd be bad for NASA and it'd be very bad for the astronaut. But that's what happened to me and that's what's happening in this industry, which is we are sending good men and women out into this unique environment with known health hazards, knowing that they're going to lose the ability to regulate metabolism properly, knowing that their hormones and circadian rhythms are going to be disrupted. And we're not warning them and we're not giving them any tools to defend against that. So as I learned what to do to counteract that, um, and I saw that there was a business opportunity because they're just wasn't anything like this available to truck drivers in the marketplace. You know, I had to break it down into systems because I figured, well, if this helped me, this, this will help hundreds and thousands and even millions of truck drivers. Right. Uh, and I was inspired by that because I was like, wow, here's this noble calling, something I'm good at, something where I've actually – I own the information and the knowledge. I mean I – this isn't something – I read somebody's – uh, 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 white paper or whatever, and it sounds like a good idea, so let me go promote it. I mean, I actually did my own field research, hacked my metabolism, did research on other drivers, can explain everything, and I was like, wow, I can do what I love to do, which is to 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 teach, to try, you know, I, I was an athlete, so I had great coaches, and go, coaches, their skill is bringing out the best in you. So I was like, why not teach driving or take driving as an athletic performance. Hmm. How can I use the latest digital health equipment available to me to measure and monitor what's going on with me physically to make me a better driver? And when I did that and I saw I could do it for other other drivers and it was working and so many lives were changing, you know, there were other people that said, "Hey, if this will work for truck drivers, this can work for anybody in America." Yeah. Let's get the information together and, 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 and that's how the book came about. I love it. I, I love all the visual examples too. First of all, I got to say the bench jump, that's, that's crazy. That's, that's very athletic. The one you're doing in the picture, <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. But I will say that this is awesome. The side you're, and here's what I love about it is these pictures, you're, you're in a parking lot, just like, just like your target will be, your reader's going to be, they're going to be at a rest stop. They're going to be in a, in, in a parking lot somewhere and you're right there. And there's the listeners, there's pictures throughout the book that are very practical and he's doing Russian twists and bicycle crunches and, and all those things. He's using the, the, the back of a pickup truck. He's using the, the, the lamp posts and he's just out there doing it uh, just <laughs> like the driver would need to do. So I love the practical application that you have here. Uh, it just makes it feel more approachable and real. And that's actually something that's a Attainable. Or I'm in I'm in a hotel room, or I'm in a laundromat, or I'm at my desk. Yes. Or I'm standing in a line at the grocery store. I mean, the part of the what part of four minute fit is the idea that one we're using new models of exercise science. It's not about how many calories you burn anymore. If your main problem is a low or slow metabolism, hmm. you've got to exercise in such a way as to create such a demand for energy that you are engaging your fat burning system at a, at a at maximum capacity. And what we learn from all of the data and, you know, because I'm using all this digital health and I'm monitoring, I could actually monitor the metabolism of the drivers every minute of the day for 91 days while they were going through the program. Wow. And all of the data was showing that um, 
if you did three things, and we taught this is what the book is about. If you did three things simultaneously every day, you would lose on average 19 pounds or 7% of your body weight in 13 weeks. Wow. Uh, and 7% was significant because I learned the medical community was telling me, hey, if you lose 7% of your body weight, you will reduce your risk for what's known as metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of 60 medical disorders and 12 cancers. Hmm. So when we, you know, the, the drivers in my program, they're exercising every day. We have these monitors on them. I'm, I'm teaching them, hey, you got to go any movement you can do maximum effort, and they're logging their food, everything they eat and drink. When we looked at all of the data, Derek, every single driver that lost weight had three things in common. One, you had to decrease your carbohydrate consumption by a minimum of 10% while simultaneously increasing your protein consumption by 5%. And the key to all of it was you had to get four minutes of vigorous or intense activity. Um, and if you did all three of those simulti- simultaneously every single day, you were literally training or resetting your metabolism to function more effectively, more efficiently, and you lost the weight. Wow. So you're saying, so again, it was decrease your carb consumption by 10%, up your protein consumption by 5%, minimum of four minutes of that hard exercise each day. Yes. Wow. And you know if you're doing the exercise, exercise right, if you you're you're moving so intensely that um you're breathing so hard you can barely finish a sentence (laughs) so the four minutes what we learned and i mean i'm not the only one saying this people have been talking about high intensity and you have tabata protocols and you have all kinds of i mean the research is 30 years old um so that's nothing new the idea is by moving all of these muscles all at once with as much intensity, you're creating such a demand for energy that your body is going to run through all of the available glucose stored in your muscle in about 60 seconds. After that, you keep going for the next three minutes, your body is like, man, we got to get fuel from somewhere. So it starts pulling from your fat stores at maximum capacity because it's got to send fuel to every muscle in the body. And if you do that for three minutes, then that fat burning system, it's on, it's engaged. You are burning fat at an accelerated rate and you're going to do that for the next hour or two. So the only other thing you need to do at that point is once you have your metabolism turned on and you're burning fat is you got to keep it on. And the way you do that is by eating. When you eat, you give your metabolism work to do. And the key thing was you have to eat the right thing. And so in the book, Four Minute Fit, we're teaching what we teach to the drivers, which is the right thing is you got to eat some form of protein and you got to limit your carbs. And if you do that, you're going to get the results. And what was great about it is drivers could fit this into their routine. They could literally open the door, be right on the side of their truck. They're already standing. It's only four minutes. You don't need equipment. You don't need to change your clothes. Right. You just do your four minutes, you get in your truck and you drive. Hmm. Or if you're the busy executive and I, my executive clients, this is what I tell them. I'm like, look, you brush your teeth in the morning, don't you? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> at least most of them. I hope. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, you're not doing that because you get off, off on brushing your teeth. Love how the bristles feel on your teeth and you just love how the foam feels on your tongue. You're not doing it for the pure aesthetic enjoyment you get from from the action, right? Right. No, you're doing it because you want to protect your teeth. You built this in a habit because at some point you realized, I'm going to have problems. I'm going to have social problems if I've got, you know, a nasty grill and and I've got bad breath. Hmm. So you, you didn't enjoy it. You didn't like brushing your teeth when you were a kid, but now it's a habit and it's like second nature, right? How long does it take you to brush your teeth? I don't know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever. And then I ask them, well, what do you do after that? And they're like, well, then I take a shower and I get dressed and I get ready to go to work. And I'm like, okay, so every behavior and every behavior change needs a trigger. So make this your trigger right after you brush your teeth, before you get in the shower, why can't you do your four minutes yeah. before you start your day? Why not turn your metabolism on so that if you're sitting at your desk all day or you're on that sales route and you're driving the car, you know, two, three, four hundred miles every day, whatever it is, 
at least you're burning fat at an accelerated rate because you turned your metabolism on. Make that the space between brushing your te teeth and taking your shower. You can do it right there in your bathroom. You can do it in your, your bedroom or your living room. It takes four minutes. Wow, that's awesome. I love this book too. It's filled with myth busters, four minute myth busters. This is a great read, great advice. Uh, and I love that you applied it back out of truck driving. I'm sure we've got some drivers that are listening, but the majority are probably the executives and sales and, and busy business owners and, and entrepreneurs that sometimes are neglecting or are are uh, having trouble being consistent. And like you said, you're showing this. And, and again, he's got visuals of in the office, at the laundromat, and the, uh, just all, everywhere. You, you can do these exercises anywhere, which is great about it. Hey, what are the, give us some other advice. What are some other things that we would, we would learn from the book? Let's see. Um, I mean, in the book, I try to keep it simple. Okay. Yeah. In fact, uh, when we were doing the book and I'm like, okay, I probably can explain everything in about 10 pages. Right. And I don't want it any more complicated than that. Because for example, in trucking, I work with all kinds of people, all walks of life. And I feel like I have to give them simple marching orders that are effective. So anything that's complicated that and that there's a learning, a steep learning curve, it makes it difficult either to get started or to maintain early on and people will get frustrated. So I'm like, hey, real simple. You want to get results, turn your metabolism on before you start your day and eat protein every three hours. But I mean, there's, there, there are other things like, for example, we live in a day and age where we, everybody has cell phones. We have access to apps that make life easier or make make you more productive and now for example um derek you can give you can actually get an objective score like if somebody asked you derek on a scale of zero to 100 how good was your nutrition yesterday right in the past you couldn't answer that objectively Right. But now you can actually get a number based on the fact that your body needs 60 essential nutrients every single day in order to function at, at an optimal level. You don't get just one of these 60 essential nutrients. Something in your body isn't working optimally. And in the past, you couldn't know how much of the nutrients you were getting. And if you tried to calculate it, you'd have stacks of book. You'd have to have pencil and paper, calculators. You'd be looking up references and you'd have to spend a lot of time just for an apple. You'd have to look up, you know, which kind of apple it was, the calories, <laughs> the carbs, the protein. You have to add all this stuff up by hand. It was nearly impossible. Right. Now – they have apps where it tracks not only your, your, your macronutrients, you know, your carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, but it'll track all your micronutrients. And at the end of the day, based on your recommended daily intake, what you or me, what I need as a 45-year-old man who weighs, you know, what I weigh and is my active, my lifestyle, I can log my food and then at the end of the day, see how much I got and get a score for that day, for that week, that month, or that year. Hmm. And I suggest everybody, if you haven't done this yet, do this at least once where you log your nutrition for seven days in a row, everything you eat and drink. Because, you know, if you don't know the nutrition content of the food you're eating, what are you making your nutrition choices based on? Hmm. It's probably situational convenience and habit. And if you're not happy with you, the current state of your weight or your health or your energy levels, knowing nutrition plays a big part of it. A lot of the, the biggest mistake people make, Derek, is they're like, oh, I got to get fit. I got to get healthy. I got to lose weight. I better start eating healthy. And so what do they do? I ask you, Derek, what do you, when you think of healthy food, what's the first thing comes to mind? Uh, I think of a salad. Salad. And then the next thing is what? Uh, vegetables, chicken, real chicken. Protein. Okay, good for you. A lot of people will say fruit. Yeah, the epitome right. of right. healthy healthy food is is fruits and vegetables. So right. if I want to lose weight, I need to eat salad and I need to eat fruit. Okay, right. so if you eat salad and there's no meat in it, there's no protein. Protein is what gives your metabolism work to do. Okay, hmm. and fruit. Well, fruit. Guess what? It's all carbs. Hmm. When your body when you eat carbs and your body doesn't need the energy because you're just sitting there behind the wheel or you're just sitting there behind the desk, you're not moving, energy is valuable, right? Don't you got to pay for heating? Don't you got to pay for electricity and all that? Right. 
So if you give your, your body something valuable in the form of potential energy, but you don't need it right then and there, your body's not just going to throw it away. It's going to store it as fat. Right. And so the mistake that a lot of the drivers were making, and I'd venture to say a lot of people trying to lose weight in America is they never analyze their nutrition to actually see what's doing the most damage. So they never fix what's doing the damage. But what they do is they just start adding more of what they think is healthy and is going to lose weight, which in this case is more fruit, which is all carbs. So you're eating carbs on top of carbs on top of carbs, which is getting stored as fat. Right. But people think, oh, I'm eating healthy because I'm eating fruit. And then after two weeks of not getting the weight loss results that they want because they really haven't mastered metabolism, they haven't mastered the system of nutrition, they're just going on hearsay, what they think is healthy, and they don't get the results and they get frustrated and they quit. Hmm. And so it hasn't really occurred. Just because something has a lot of vitamins and minerals like fruit doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be good for your metabolism in certain contexts. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I love this book. I love your approach. I, it's you're so right. People are sometimes doing what they think is healthy, uh, and, and doing more of it, and it's actually hurting them for the for the goals that they have. I love the facts section you have in here too. You, you talk about things like I'm traveling. That's usually when I fall off my nutrition plan. Hey, another one that I didn't know is a protein bar, a good substitute for a meal, and you walk through that. This is a great book. I'm I'm excited to read through. I, I've, I'm about halfway through. I'm enjoying it. But you give a good roadmap, and so even for the novice out there that's not sure what to do. This, this is not a, a fad diet. This is this is a, a way to to be lean and be healthy for for a lifetime and and have a life and have a, a little bit of a lifestyle change too, which I really like. And, and you know, you make a great point. You're right. It's not a fad. It's not a diet. What I'm what I'm doing is, I have to teach the drivers how to make the best food choice for their metabolism, based on where they're at and what's available to them. Because again, I can't say, hey, I want you to meal prep and I want you to cook these meals and you don't have a kitchen and you don't have a blender. These drivers, they're still eating out every single day. Mm. They're going to the fast food places. So any strategy that tries to take them out of their infrastructure and their routine is going to be too much change. It's overwhelming. It's going to fail. So right. I have to teach these drivers, hey, when you are at this particular restaurant, this fast food places or whatever, here's how you choose the best thing for your metabolism to get the results you want. Hmm. Um, and again, to me, it's a much smarter approach to let me log my food every single day for seven days. Let me analyze it. Let me see what is the thing that I eat repeatedly that is, causes the single most amount of damage. And let me fix that one change. But because I eat it repeatedly, if I make that one change, it's going to affect my nutrition for the entire week, right? Right. So once I fix that, then I'm like, okay, now what's the next thing that I eat that is doing the most damage? And after you do that four or five times max – you don't have to overhaul your entire diet. You're just making what I call the smart strategic changes or the 2% solution. What's the 2% of things that I need to know, specialized knowledge, that's going to give me 80% of the results that I want? And you can do that with your nutrition now because we have the tools like the Chronometer smartphone app. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and they're, they're things that are attainable to do. They're small changes uh, that adapt to the, your lifestyle that you're already in. Uh, and, and I bet you're still seeing dramatic results. Yes, ex that's that's the key. That's exciting. And, th and that makes it easier to stay with when they're doing these small changes. I love it. Hey, I want to give time to, to plug your book here before we go. And again, I want to thank you so much for being our guest. And I want to tell our listeners, this also contributing to this book is the executive editor of Sports Illustrated. Uh, keep in mind, it's a P-Way story. He's, he's Fox won an Emmy telling his story changing lanes. Uh, this is a great book. You, you've got to pick it up. I'm reading through it right now. It's, it's, it's a game changer for you and your diet uh, and your exercise and getting results uh, without getting frustrated. Where, where, are we, where do we find this book? Hey, thanks, Derek. Man, I appreciate those kind words. Um, you can get the book at 4minutefitbook.com forward slash leadership. So we've got a landing page just for your audience, all the people that are listening to the podcast, right? Um, again, you can go to four, that's the number four, minutefitbook.com 
forward slash leadership. You can get the book there and you can find out more about me. There's some videos there where you can see examples of the exercise um, uh, and some of the content that I was able to produce with one of my partners, which is Progressive Commercial Insurance. Um, just a lot of great stuff um, because we, it, it, again, it's not just for truck drivers. It's for anyone who's Needs to lose weight. If you have a sedentary job, time crunched, which is pretty much everyone, yeah. stressed out, that's a lot of America. Right. Um, it, it just – it's the minimum effective dosage. Hey, I, love, I love the idea of, of brushing your teeth and then doing that. It's, it's putting a ritual and a pattern in your day that you get used to doing. And it's not as – I'm not saying don't go to the gym or don't go exercise or run or do the other things you like to do. But this is a great – I'm, I'm going to implement this for myself because I like to do small things that get a big impact and output and can go into a ritual and a pattern for me. That's how, I, that's how I'm able to sustain and, and continue to do them easier in my own life. So we've got the number we've got the the number four four minute fitbook dot com forward slash leadership for our podcast listeners and then for our our uh, ESPN radio version of the show as well. Make sure you go check that out. It's a great book. It, I promise that it will be impacting for your life for your health. And so, P. I want to thank you again for being our guest. It's an honor really to have you here today. Hey, thank you, Derek, man. I really appreciate having the opportunity to talk to you and you know get the message out to to, to the people who need it. Hey, we're excited for you. Uh, best of luck. We're, we know this book is going to be a smash success, and we're going to continue to follow you and watch the great things that you do. Absolutely. Hey, we'll stay in touch, and we'll talk soon. You've been listening to the Business Leadership Series, where we engage with leaders who are making an impact on their worlds and who want to share their knowledge and experience for your personal and professional growth. This interview was designed to inspire you to become the best leader you can be. 